Today we're gonna to be taking an old hand-me-down pool table and turning it into this modern pool table. Let's get started. Okay, so I've got my angles for the top and the bottom of the inside of the rails. And I'm gonna start by ripping all of those two by six by eight foot long red oak boards down to those angles on the table saw. After I get done with that, then I'm gonna move on to cutting these dados. And the dados are actually what holds the felt in place. So you place the felt, you smash in a feather board which is going to cinch down that felt, and then you roll it back over top of the bumper. Now I can move on to actually templating out the pockets. Now one thing I noticed when I was looking at these pockets is that they are on a slight, it's about a five degree bank from the top to the bottom. And I think the reason for that is because the pocket itself, the, the pool ball pocket, when it fits in there, it's kind of tilted back a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over and set it on my two by sixes and trace out those pockets. Now that I've got the pockets traced out, I can move on to cutting out those pockets with a jigsaw. I'm gonna first cut out those pockets with a jigsaw and then the most important cuts are gonna be the inside of those bumpers, that inside um, edge. So I am going to find those angles again and then I'm gonna make those final cuts with the miter saw. With the pockets all cut, now I can move on to cutting all of the boards down to length and assembling together the rails. Now some rails come off piece by piece, however, my setup is one full rectangle for the top rails. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble those together with wood glue and inch and a quarter hardwood pocket hole screws. Now I'm gonna head back over to the old pool table and I'm gonna start taking apart the old skirting so that I can install the rails, or not install the rails, but figure out where the bolts are gonna to need to go in the bottom of the rails. Now that I've got all the skirting off, I can set the new rails on top of the pool table and mark those holes for the hanger bolts from below. To install the hanger bolts, I simply drilled a hole that was the same size as the diameter of the screw minus the threads, and then installed that by cinching together two nuts and using a socket head driver to screw those into place. Now the legs on this original pool table were kind of inset, they were just the old school, um, you know, pedestal legs or whatever you want to call them. However, for this table or this makeover, we're going to be building eight inch square, big, beefy legs on each corner. And the reason they need to be that big is because the pockets are on those corners and the pockets need to recess into the legs. Now, once I get those legs built up, we're going to miter everything, all the corners at exactly 45 degrees, tape those up, glue them together, and then I'm going to follow it with some pin nails to make sure that they don't come apart. Okay. 
Okay, so we're moving on to the finishing process and this project's a little bit of a work in progress kind of thing. We're just figuring it out as we go. Now for the material, we went with the red oak and the problem with that is it's got that reddish hue to it. So when you put a finish on it, it really brings out that red color in the oak. So we're going to, for this project, we're going to bleach the red oak to try and mute some of that. And the process for doing that is you mix up lye, uh, three tablespoons per quart of water, and then you coat the wood in hydrogen peroxide and then apply the lye and then you let it dry. This is the difference between the two once that's done. This is the bleached wood and this is the red oak natural with a polyurethane finish on it. So we're gonna go ahead and coat all of the surfaces um, for each one of these pieces that we're building and then we are going to come back and add that polyurethane for that protective layer. When it came to attaching the felt, I decided to do it myself and it was actually a lot easier than I thought. I just simply started at the shorter end and stapled that nice and tight, stretching it in both directions and then went to the other end, did the same and then went to the sides. Now it's time to put the bumpers on. Now the bumpers are going to be adhered to the rails using weldwood contact cement. So in order to, the process of applying that is we need to apply it to both sides, the back of the bumper as well as the rail itself, and then let it sit until it sits up and can get nice and tacky. Then we can move on to actually installing those bumpers by just simply locating them exactly where they need to be and pressing them into place. So now you'll notice that on the ends of the cushions, the um, there's, you know, some of the wood is exposed. So they actually make bumpers and we weren't able to save those. They're like the end cap essentially for the cushion and the wood in the pocket. Now we're going to be using Weldwood's contact cement to adhere those as well. So we've gone ahead and applied that to the inside of the pocket as well as those bumpers. And then we're going to apply those to the insides of the pockets and then come back and trim off the excess. Now we can move on to installing the sights. Now the sights are the little dots on the side rails of a pool table and that helps you kind of line up your shot and divide up the table so that you can make those bank shots. Now the sights on the old table were a pearl inlay. However, I wanted to give this table a little bit more of a modern look. So what we ended up doing is we took some half inch diameter brass rod and I cut that down into little discs. Then I took a Forstner bit and I drilled holes where all of those sights are supposed to go and I glued those in place with DAP's Rapid Fuse. Now it's time to move on to covering the rails. And this was part of the process that I was a little bit worried about to be honest. However, it kind of went fairly straightforward. Tucking the corners and getting the folds just right was a little bit of a learning curve. However, there's tons of videos on YouTube. You can just search up how to recover a pool table or recovering pool table rails for tons of information on how to do that. Once we got the rails covered, then we can move on to installing the rails on top of the table. Once we got the rails installed on top of the table, then we moved on to installing the legs. Now the legs, I wanted to make sure that they were offset from the top 
and they were mounted to those beams that run below the table because that's what carries all of the weight of the pool table itself. I started off by getting the legs exactly where I wanted and cutting some shims to make sure that I filled the gap between the legs and the beam. Then I screwed through the beam into the legs to secure those temporarily while I removed the old pool table legs and drilled the new holes in the beam and through the new legs where I could take those bolts, the old bolts, and transfer them to the new legs. With the legs installed, the last piece of the base was the aprons. And I had some six and a half inch boards that I had ripped down earlier and finished. I just needed to cut them to length and then secure those with pocket hole screws. Last but not least was installing the pockets, which was pretty straightforward. They're a nice tight fit and they just get tacked in place with some little tack nails. So I hope you guys love this project as much as we did. We got rid of this eyesore that was in the middle of our basement and turned it into this really cool modern looking table. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, make sure you hit that one right there so you won't miss out on any future videos. Until next time, be safe and happy building.